All right, so until right now, we talked about 10 reasons why I think you should get this camera. Now, is everything positive about this camera? And the answer is no, of course not. There is no such thing as a perfect camera. So. In this segment, I wanna talk about some of the things that I don't like about the camera, and perhaps those may be deal breakers for you, or you may not care and still wanna move forward with the acquisition of this piece of equipment. First thing that I don't like about this camera, and this one is a huge one, is this camera has no iOS. I think that Canon really uh, missed the mark, and I know what they're trying to do, you know, they're trying to test the waters, you know, they don't wanna jeopardize their other systems that they have out there, but launching the system with Ibis really could have been a threat for Sony, you know, especially after all the enhancements that this camera has undergone, but Ibis is something that we can now fix via firmware update. However, I've heard that they were working on an EOS R ver uh, version two that is potentially gonna include IBIS, and if that's the case, man, this system is getting better and better and better. Second thing that I don't like about this camera is that it has only one car slide. I have, and actually was saved because I was saving RAW and JPEG, and that was with the A7R 3 I was actually in the UK covering an event, and I like to set one car to record RAW and the second car to record JPEG. And guess what? All my raw files were completely corrupted. And I actually saved the day because I have JPEG. So since that day, I don't really go to the field with just one camera. And this is one of the reasons why I use it mainly at the studio, and that's because I tether when I'm at the studio so I can record inside the car and also onto the computer, so then I have multiple backup. But I wouldn't rely on this camera for like a wedding or an event or, or something that you're getting paid and you have to get those images. So that may be a deal breaker for you, that may not be a deal breaker for me. Um, in my opinion, it is a deal breaker if this is the only camera that you're gonna use for all your professional work, but keep that in mind. Reason number three, and that is going to be this little slidey touch bar right there. So this touch bar is supposed to be kind of like a configurable digital scrolling wheel slash button slash scroll arrow thing. So I think it's kind of cool, you know, it's kind of like also gimmicky. And at the same time, I don't care because I find myself that it's a little bit cumbersome to activate it. As you see right there, you hold it here. I have a setup where you hold it to activate it, you hold it to deactivate it, and then I can change my ISO by sliding. I think that if you would have put a wheel right there, you know, a third wheel would have been much more welcome than this little bar that you have to configure. Sometimes work, sometimes doesn't, and I actually don't care for that feature. So I hope in the next version of this camera, they remove it and put your scroll wheel there, and I think all of us were gonna be super happy about that. Now, the fourth thing that I don't like about this camera is this little dial right here. So let me switch so I show you guys. So this dial right here right now is set up to control the aperture and the lens is going crazy because I'm too close to something. But this one is set up to uh, control the aperture. And actually, I like the way Sony does it right here on the front. So in the Sony, I control the aperture here as well. I think it would have been nice if this camera had a front dial and leave this one right here for the ISO or like I mentioned before, maybe move it over here. So, you know, not a big deal, I'm getting used to it. Um, actually, I have the ring set up for, for the ISO right now, but it would be nice to have a third dial somewhere in here, so. Now, this is gonna be the fifth thing that I don't like about the system. And again, this is uh, nitpicking the camera and now beating the dead horse. This little rubber um, doors, um, they're actually a little bit annoying, especially when you have something plugged in in there. Um, I wish they had some sort of door compartment, kind of like, Sony does right here, you know, little well-defined doors that you can actually open like that and they really open and they don't dangle everywhere. Every time I wanna plug something, it's kinda like a fight that I need to have with this little things opening, no opening. But again, not a deal breaker, all right? Now let's talk about the sixth thing that I don't like about this camera and that is gonna be how the camera changes from photo mode to video mode. And let me show you that right now. So for example, right now I'm in manual mode in photography. So if I wanna change to video, what I have to do is press this button right there and then flip the camera, press the info button or the info on the screen to change to uh, a movie mode. And I think that that's super, super cumbersome. Let's do it again. Info, there you go. Sometimes works, sometimes it doesn't, there you go. Uh, now I'm in manual movie mode and now if I wanna switch back to uh, photo mode, I have to do exactly the same thing. And there you go, and now I'm in photography mode. Now, cameras have been doing you know, for the longest with a dial. So I don't know why they actually didn't put a dial right there. You know, this this dial actually could have been modified to have that functionality where you simply, you know, turn and you're in photo mode, turn, you're in SNQ or, you know, fast, uh, slow motion or movie mode, just like Sony does it right here. I think that this is the best way to do it. 
Um, but again, uh, is it a deal breaker? Not for me because I don't shoot video with this camera in particular. So this was being used mainly for photography, so I can deal with that. But if you're gonna be someone high res shooting, you know, taking pictures and switching right back to video and going back to photo, probably it's not gonna be the most effective system or the most effective way to changing your settings. So keep that in mind. Seventh thing that I don't like about this camera and that's gonna have to do with the buttons, the way they feel and how they are laid out. So let me show you. So for example, right here, we have a bunch of buttons right here that can be configured you know, to different things. The menu button right there is in the opposite direction, kinda like uh, it is on the uh, Sony system. So no problem there. But this one's right here, they're kinda like hard to press. And a lot of the times I wanna press them, I ended up pressing the AF on or, or something else. So there's not a lot of tactile feel. And I wish these buttons were a little bit more raised and probably a little bit bigger as well. Also, we have a bunch of buttons right here. This ones right here are pretty shallow. And again, kind of like hard to aim if you're not gonna wanna uh, remove your eye from the EVF and control you know, your settings or whatever you're trying to do with the button. So it's not a deal breaker to me, but it slows me down a little bit. So something to get used to. Eighth thing that I don't like about the system or I wish it was done a little bit different and it's the eye cup. The eye cup is actually glued to the system. It, there's no way to remove it. And with all my cameras, I like to experience and experiment different eye cups. For example, right here in my Sony, I have this one that is uh, a little bit deeper. Check it out. This is not the one that comes with the Sony. I really like the way it feels in the eye. Now this one is kind of shallow and by being shallow, I find myself, you know, putting my nose and my mouth sometimes against the screen. It's something that I don't like to do and even though it has a sensor right here that actually turns off all the functionality when you're looking through the EVF, I like to be a little more retracted and I like my eye to be more sealed when I'm actually shooting through the EVF. You know, I use mainly EVF. I don't use the screen so much for photography. And uh, you know, if I would have that capability of replacing the eye cup, that would be so, so nice. But again, like I mentioned before, something that I can live with and get used to. Number nine, and that is going to be the price of the RF lenses. Now, I mentioned before, RF lenses are one of the best lenses that I've used and that I actually own. But those lenses don't come with all that quality without a hefty price. You know, some of the lenses are right now, for example, the 28 to, uh, I believe it's the 28 to 70, it's actually $3,000. And sometimes they lower the price, you can get a deal, but $3,000 for a kind of like a 24 to a 70 type of lens, it's a lot of money. Now the 24 to 70 is a lot cheaper. Uh, the 85 millimeter was very expensive. I believe I pay um, $2,600 now, the quality that I get out, out of that lens, I mean, it's well worth it, guys. So what I actually wish it happened is that Canon released the 1.8 line of lenses rather than going with a super wide aperture lenses. You know, that's the reason why they're so expensive and so big. And I think that that would have made the adoption of the system much more friendlier uh, to a lot of people. And I know that they're working on the 1.8 line and some people are saying that the system, you know, has huge lenses and what's the purpose going mirrorless and all of a sudden you, know, you actually have to, you know, use all those lenses. But look at this lens, for example, this is the 35 millimeter and this is a testament of what Canon is capable to do uh, when the aperture is not as wide as a 1.2 or 1.4. This one is a 1.8 and it's actually way shorter than the, the Sony lens. It's a little bit more uh, girthier, but I don't mind the girth. You know, I actually mind if a lens is actually taller because it's harder to pack and so on. So I think that when Canon releases the 1.8 line of aperture lenses, you know, a lot of people are gonna be happy and those are gonna be around the uh, $500 to $900, $1,000 range for premium lenses of those apertures. So keep that in mind. If you have the patience to wait, this is a great system to get. If you have already EF lens, this is a great system to get. 10 thing that I don't like about this camera right now and it's the position of the on off button. So we have the on off button right here. So if you're a one hand shooter, um, definitely you're gonna need another hand to actually turn on off the camera. You know, I like the way that Sony does it right here. So it's super, super fast to turn on the camera, boom, and I'm on, off. Now here, you cannot do the same. You know, you actually have to rely on this hand. And a lot of the times, you know, I'm actually flickering here. There's nothing here to turn on and off. And I wish they could actually swap this button somewhere around here so I can control everything we want. So that is basically it, guys. What do you guys think? You know, make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button for more video like this one, and let me know what you think about the system. Are you planning to get the system? Have you got the system? And if so, tell me which lens you like the most. I actually am loving the 85 millimeter and this piece that I have right here, which I have a review coming up. So guys, 
I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again with another episode.